Human nature is defined by both heartwarming, friendly daily interactions and deeply disturbing incidents where senseless conflicts occur. We all know how ridiculous many public freakout videos can be, where monumental reactions follow very minor slights. But what about when an entire country is involved in revenge and even war breaks out over small international slights? Well, in the video today, we discover the most petty international diplomatic incidents over little more than a spilt drink, or maybe just one severed ear. Number 10. The War of Jenkins Ear the 1739-1748 conflict known as the War of Jenkins' Ear has to be one of the most disturbing yet ridiculous international conflicts in history. A British official brings up the matter of his ear being cut off by a Spaniard years earlier, and the matter is used to provoke and justify a war. Known in Spanish as the Guerra del Asiento, the conflict was lengthily, despite its petty origin, lasting from October 22, 1739 to October 18, 1748. After the Anglo-Spanish War, the 1729 Treaty of Seville afforded Spanish warship crews the right to inspect British vessels for smuggled goods that would violate a Spanish crown-issued Asiento, or monopoly that was given on specific trade routes and product categories. Britain had an unfortunate Asiento offering not only the right to transport 500 tons of goods per year to Spanish colonies, but a limitless number of slaves as well. On April 9, 1731, British brig Rebecca was stopped by La Isabella, a Spanish patrol boat. Things went south when Garda Costa Juan de Leon Fandino cut off Rebecca captain Robert Jenkins's left ear off the Florida coast. In March 1738, he testified in the House of Commons about the incident, allegedly displaying the severed ear. Probably a little bad by that point. The vicious act was used by members of parliament to drum up support for war, which got started in 1739. Number 9. The Football War Soccer, it is synonymous with intense international sports competition, but it's not going to be the sort of thing that starts a war, right? Oh no, you'd be wrong, because in 1969, the Central American nations of Honduras and El Salvador were competing for a place in the 1970 World Cup that was taking place in Mexico. Rhetoric turned sour as El Salvador won two of the three matches played. Rioting ensued, followed by violence to the point where El Salvador ended diplomatic relations with Honduras. Soon, the Air Force of El Salvador was flying attack missions into Honduras. The air raids were quickly followed by a ground force invasion. Four days of fighting, totaling around 100 hours passed before pressure from the Organization of American States OAS, led to a ceasefire. But a steep price had been paid, with casualties of the conflict numbering at 2,000. Between vigilante attacks, the invasion, and the rioting, La Guerra del Football, the soccer war, became the flashpoint for growing political tensions between Honduras and El Salvador. Part of the reason for the hostility between the two countries was the presence of illegal immigrants from El Salvador in Honduras, while the people of El Salvador felt that their people were being persecuted while trying to pursue opportunities in Honduras. Number 8. The Pig War Canada and the United States enjoy excellent diplomatic relations. Yet in 1869, border disputes between the British administration laying claim to what is now British Columbia, which was to become a Canadian province in 1871, and the United States erupted in the Pig War. The dispute centered on the San Juan Islands, which lie between Vancouver Island and the mainland coast of British Columbia, Canada, and Washington State, USA. The Oregon Treaty prescribed a midwater division between Vancouver Island and the North American mainland as continuation of the main division at the 49th parallel. Yet San Juan Islands posed a geographical problem with its identity as American or British territory falling into dispute. Both American and British settlers established residence on San Juan Islands. One pig, belonging to a British employee of the Hudson Bay Company, Charles Griffin, trespassed on the land of the American farmer Lyman Cutler, who shot the pig after it ate his potatoes on June 5, 1859. Griffin reported Cutler to British authorities for shooting the pig, who discussed arresting Cutler. Cutler panicked, reporting the threat of arrest to locals, which went all the way up to General William S. Harney, Department of Oregon Commander. Harney, he didn't like the British, and soon deployed 66 men of the U.S. 9th Infantry Division to San Juan Island on July 27th. Three British warships were sent in response, and Admiral Robert L. Baines, British Pacific Naval Commander-in-Chief, was ordered by Governor James Douglas to fight the U.S. infantry. Baines declined, refusing to involve two great nations in a war over a squabble about a pig. After Washington and London became aware of the conflict, tensions they continued, but they ceased once an international commission, ironically headed by the notorious Kaiser William I of Germany laid the matter to rest, awarding the San Juan Islands to the United States. Number 7. The Bird Dropping War 
War is crappy, but usually not literally. But one war between Spain and Peru, spanning 1864 to 1866, was not only crappy, but actually involved real bird crap. Guano is the traditional Quechua name for seabird droppings, and the so-called Guano War conflict was fought largely over competing claims to seabird droppings. You see, these, since ancient times, had been used as fertilizer. The First War of the Pacific, from 1864 to 1866, involved an effort by Peru, in alliance with Chile, Bolivia, and Ecuador, to kick Spanish interests out of the Chincha Islands, where the colonial powers were removing guano in massive quantities together with saltpeter. A second war erupted in 1879 and lasted until 1883, known as the Second War of the Pacific. In this war, loyalties switched, and Chile fought against Peru and Bolivia. Peru lost some southern islands to Chile, where most ironically, Bolivia lost access to the sea, but still had a navy. Peruvian guano is considered the best bird poop fertilizer in the world, and in the aftermath of the war, a carefully managed industry has developed, subject to stringent regulation to prevent the disturbance of the cormorants that produce the guano. Number 6. The Nika Riot The Roman Empire was known for being the seat of many great battles, yet Constantinople also sets the stage for a most petty yet horrific conflict. The Nika Riots of 532 AD were sparked by aggression over murder arrests of hooligans at chariot racing events comparable to scenes from the Hunger Games. In a political landscape that recalled gang color loyalty, the city was divided into four different color quadrants, each supporting their own sports teams, especially those engaged in chariot racing. After a riot over chariot racing, perpetrators had been arrested for murder, with the majority being hanged. Two escaped, belonging to the blue and green colors, and took refuge in a church. Emperor Justinian, who was allied with the blue color, commuted the sentences of the two escapees to imprisonment, but the crowds angrily demanded a pardon. Justinian announced a chariot race for January the 13th, but soon despaired when crowds stopped supporting any color, but unified against Justinian. Over the next few days, the fighting demolished half of the city of Constantinople. Justinian ordered the violent rebellion to be quelled by force. The violence ultimately caused the death of 30,000 rioters. Despite the aftermath, Justinian was able to rebuild the city and grow the Roman Empire. Number 5. The War of the Stray Dog War dogs were a staple of some ancient battles and modern conflicts, but it's less well known that a single stray dog set off a military conflict between Greece and Bulgaria in 1925. Minted from the Ottoman Empire by independence efforts in 1832 and 1908, Greece and Bulgaria, respectively, had a lot in common, but ended up at odds over border disputes stemming from Balkan League territorial divisions and then the spoils of World War I. As tension simmered, outbreaks of fighting cumulatively killed several hundred. Soldiers were continually stationed along the border, and then a dog belonging to a Greek soldier guarding the border, bolted across into Bulgaria. The soldier pursued his dog only to be shot at by Bulgarian border guards, and then he was killed simply for chasing his dog. Fighting ensued between the two armed forces, leaving a Greek captain dead and wounding an assisting soldier. Soon matters escalated into a second armed conflict when Bulgaria's apology was rebuffed by the Greek president, Theodorus Pangalos, who had seized power in a coup. This led to a Greek invasion of Bulgaria. Eventually, the League of Nations stepped in, stopped the conflict, and ordered Greece to pay £45,000 in compensation to Bulgaria. Fifty people were killed during the occupation. Number 4. The First Opium War The First Opium War, also called the Anglo-Chinese War, was a military conflict that essentially erupted when Britain declared war on China over a Qing Dynasty-era Chinese ban on selling opium. Frustrated over the impacts on drug dealers seen as important to British trade advantages in China, Britain took revenge in what is generally now termed gunboat diplomacy, unleashing naval firepower culminating in the British taking of Hong Kong. The conflict emerged when China suffered challenges due to a high European demand for Chinese products such as tea, silk, and porcelain that was countered by Chinese limitations on British trade. The sale of opium at high profit to operators in East Asia by the British East India Company was pursued as a trade balancing measure. However, the trade led to a drug addiction epidemic in China, and eventually China banned opium. Britain responded with military force that opened up trade and led to the British seizure of Hong Kong. There was substantial public opposition to the First Opium War, including a diary entry by William Gladstone stating, I am in dread of the judgments of God upon England for our national inquiry towards China. Efforts to stop the war failed in the House of Commons, causing the war to extend until 1842. In 1856, there was a second Opium War that lasted until 1860. Number 3. The Pastry War a war between Mexico and France it seemed unlikely due to geography, also there was really a lack of reason for conflict in the public mind. Yet Mexico and France were once at odds to the point of battleship deployment and even death and dismemberment over matters of mere pastry in a conflict running from 1838 to 1839. In early 1838, a French pastry shop owner reported that his shop in Mexico had been ransacked and badly damaged by soldiers of the Mexican army. When his demands for comp 
compensation from Mexico fell upon deaf ears, the owner took his cause to France, asking that his country fight for him. To compensate for the damage to his pastry shop, 600,000 pesos were requested, supported by a fleet that arrived in Veracruz. The French forces fired on the fortress at San Juan de Alua, then occupied the city. This all took place in April of 1838. When payment was secured with the help of British negotiators, the French fleet withdrew in March of 1839. The intermittently in office Mexican dictator Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna lost his leg in the conflict, but gained in political standing through the pastry war, having his lost leg buried with military honors. Number 2. The Bucket War Italy was not always the unified European nation it is today. In medieval times, Italy was still comprised of city-states, and the rivalry between them was often quite vicious. The year 1323 saw a bizarre conflict where soldiers from Modena stole a bucket out of a well in the city-state of Bologna. While seemingly trivial, the taking of the bucket drew the ire of 30,000 foot soldiers and 2,000 fighters on horseback under the command of Pope John XXII. In contrast, the bucket thieves were protected by a relatively meager 5,000 foot soldiers, despite also having 2,000 combatants on horses. Even though the bucket takers were greatly outnumbered, their forces prevailed throughout the fight. Medina saw victory in the Battle of Sapolino, with the stolen bucket forever staying in Medina. Made of oak, the bucket had drawn the attention of the soldiers as a potential trophy. Once hostilities had come to an official end, no less than 4,000 lives had been sacrificed over a dispute about a bucket. Number 1. The Cod Wars England and Iceland, both island nations of Europe, might seem unlikely candidates for war. Yet nations, they love fish, and it is that interest in common that provoked conflict. In between the years shortly after World War II and the mid-1970s, four significant fights broke out, known as something totally unpronounceable in Icelandic that translates to the Cod Strife, or another unpronounceable Icelandic word that translates to the Wars for the Territorial Waters. Sorry to anyone who's Icelandic and watching, but I'm not going to try and butcher your language. The conflict started when Iceland reduced British rights to trawl in Icelandic waters, then extended the boundary of Icelandic waters from three nautical miles to four nautical miles out to sea. Iceland then announced an expansion from four to twelve nautical miles. Britain reacted, but Iceland prevailed through international dispute resolution measures that quelled further armed confrontations at sea. Boundaries were extended again from twelve to fifty nautical miles, which really angered the British, but again, Iceland won the dispute. In the end, a 1975 action saw the boundary extended to 200. 100 miles. In the course of the repeated conflicts, matters involved battleship confrontations with the British Royal Navy, including one incident where an Icelandic warship fired at a British vessel. Only one death resulted from the entire span of the Cod Wars, the electrocution of an Icelandic engineer conducting hull repairs following a collision with a British ship. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and do not forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, though, why not check out my other channel called Today I Found Out? You'll find a link to that below. Below. And as always, thank you for watching.